o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the round table show, folks. And as always, I have some great DJs here tonight. Unfortunately, I'm missing two DJs. One DJ is actually traveling, and the other DJ is, well, he's also traveling too. So uh, <laughs> one is actually held up at a hotel. The other one is uh, out at uh, having some fun uh, coming back from a soccer game. So hopefully they won. Uh, Jim, how are you, sir? I see you out there in California. Um, always good to see you, sir. And then, as always, hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves this evening. Um, we are actually talking a little bit about some gig stuff, and I want to talk about a few things from last week's show so we get caught up on that stuff. And actually, it's always great when people say things and talk about things, uh, especially in uh, YouTube. And uh, first thing first, I want to uh, thank uh, DJ Aga. Again, he always uh, has questions and stuff like that. And we were talking last time a little bit about karaoke. Uh, he had a comment. Uh, I don't get karaoke requ requests for weddings. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I've gotten some requests for uh, to request to sing a song for a couple. Wow. That's very, very cool, dude. You know, especially somebody asked you to sing. Uh, I heard Matt sing a little earlier. And he's got a good voice. I can see a couple hiring him as to sing. Uh, but they were record. Uh, but they were a recording artist. It's for a couple of corporate Christmas parties this year that they're requesting for karaoke. Um, that is always cool to have that. And you know, again, you're doing the, you're out there doing it, not to have a problem. Um, also, he agreed with Matt far as lapels. Uh, he feels that they're unreliable. I only give wireless mic as an option for ceremonies. I tell client if they're officially watching the lapel, they could bring their own mic and plug into my system. But even they plug into your system, you could still run the problems because it's running the EQs on a lapel. And that's the thing. Once you EQ it and you set it, it takes a little bit of work. But once you do a e uh, lapel microphone, trust me, uh, it, it works out really great. And the photography, the photographer is happy and the picture is just they're phenomenal. Um, it doesn't look um, the same because you don't have that mic on a stick. And then finally, he said, let's go Buffalo Bills. We are Super Bowl bound this year or maybe next year. Well, we'll see what the Bills do. You know, get it so early in the season. I know Matt has his all his teams for his uh, fantasy football league. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we're back uh... – Three in a row now, or three and three. We're back. we started the season terribly, but now we're back to five hundred. We're back in the swing of things. So who's your who's your quarterback? Uh, Lamar Jackson. But my oh, receivers okay. have been uh, solid. I got Adam Thielen. I got AJ Brown. They've all they all had kind of slower starts, but they're they're now producing you know fifteen twenty points a game. So we're uh we're looking good. Next week's gonna be tough. It's a bye week for a bunch of mine. So we'll see. But we're not dead in the water. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, it's like anything else. You know, hopefully your uh, your team will win. It's the thing about fantasy football. It's always a, a mess up. And then, unfortunately, um, I feel sorry for someone who picked uh, Justin Fields for my beloved Bears because he hurt his thumb really bad, finger. dislocated it, and he's going to be out for a little bit. So you're, yeah. telling me these, you're telling me these superstar athletes who make millions of dollars per game can't play with a little hurt thumb. Uh dislocated he's thumb. The most, you know, that, that, this guy seems so injury prone. It's crazy. I've never torn an ACL. And I've been pretty active my whole life. I mean, I don't get tackled every every well, other play, but like yeah. It's crazy. It's just crazy how you know delicate a lot of these guys' bodies I, are. I, I don't know. They're pretty resilient. He uh he's couldn't grab a football and go hold a football in his hand. So it was, uh, again, very disheartening to see them lose uh, against the Minnesota Vikings. But, you know, it, it's it's like anything else. You know, it, all you do is hope for the best as a fan. <laughs> but with that said, uh, let's go on to the topics for tonight's show. Uh, first thing first, I uh, want to ask you guys this one right here, uh, because it's always interesting. 
Um, and this is goes off to uh, we're talking about previously about music and about music selections. Now, when you talk to your clients and you ask them uh, for music, I like I use Vibo. And I, I love how Vibo works. I know everyone does different things, different software and, you know, has different sheets and so forth and so on. And Matt says the only customers he wants are people with iPhones because us Android people who uh, don't like uh, Apple products <laughs> yeah, uh, screw up his sheets. But I've also run into that with Google screwing up because uh, people use Google Docs when I did, uh, um, did Microsoft uh, Office. Uh, I still use Microsoft Office, you know, Excel, but the thing is that uh, Google Docs will screw up Excel all the time. But um, I wanted to ask you guys, when you ask a client for music for an event, what is the average amount of songs you ask for for must play? What I mean by that, not if you're doing a ceremony, I'm not talking about ceremony music, I'm not talking about introductions. If it's a birthday party, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, you know, give me songs for the dance floor. How many songs do you usually ask for must plays? Now, like myself, I ask for 10. And the reason why is that I ask some other questions, try and get their ideas. I ask them what kind of genres they want. But 10 songs, usually five each side for each each uh, person, uh, for couples, it's usually gives you a good bellwether of stuff. And you can take a look at that and say, oh, well, the song works better at dinner. This song works better at cocktail. This song works better for a dance floor. It kind of gives you some ideas and some options, but also doesn't make you feel like you're a glorified MP3 player uh, playing music. So I'm going to go with DJ Brentley up there in Wisconsin. Uh, how many people, How many songs do you usually ask your clients uh, for general play or for must plays? I don't ask for a specific number necessarily. Um, more often than not, I'm like, give me whatever you want. Be it, you know, a 10 songs or be it you give me a Spotify playlist with 200. And honestly, if you give me that spotty with 200, yeah, be, and I, you know, because I do, you know, do the club thing more often than not when I mix, Give me the 200 i'm gonna get through probably most of them except for the ones you have to play you know all the way through but you've just taken a lot of the guesswork out for me now it's just programming it for the night but the average couple gives me you know 10 to 20 songs but they also give me <coughs> what genres they're into and um you know what else like what group participation dances they want and when I'm doing my, you know, last, you know, callers or meetings with them, I will kind of dig into them a little bit to be like, okay, you give me X, Y, and Z. What are your favorite bands? What kind of concerts did you like to go see? Um, what were your favorite bands in high school and college? And I'm poking so I can get a bigger scope of what they're into. So those that don't give me much to work with, I can kind of, you know, not necessarily pull teeth, but get some ideas from our combo take those notes and create something that's based on what they've told me that also fits the wedding motif. And then there's other weddings like the one I had Saturday and whoop, my chair went limp, but, um, <laughs> but it's been, been chair problems very, already, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. You know, turning 50, putting on an extra 20 pounds in the last couple of years. It's great. But the other thing, like, the wedding I had last Saturday and a couple I've had this month have all been like, okay, for the first 20, 30 minutes, maybe, maybe hour, play your atypical wedding music. And then all we want is EDM. And like my wedding Saturday, wow. I mean, it was way out there with a lot of, like I, I, a lot of grizz, a lot of sudden death, uh, and a lot of dubstep stuff. And when like you you know you're in for a hard night with you like and at least i played it in the early part of the night because that's what they wanted i played ushers yeah and no one really cared but the second i put on doses and mimosas you know from cherub the entire place went nuts and we were off to the races so i really try to poke and prod out of my couples to get the best ideas i can from them 
So when I put it all together, I'm good to go. And the couple on Saturday, they gave me a few songs and a few artists, which gave me a very broad idea of what they wanted. Like, you know, the girl, like she was very into, you know, one of her must plays was Rather Be from Clean Bandit. Um, Titanium was on there. We found love. So they were into the girl pop EDM kind of stuff. And all the boys were into the really heavy dubstep. So once we got past, yeah, I'm like, okay, this isn't working. Quick mix out of it so I can just play the last chorus and go and get right to what we're here for. And that's been more commonplace. And I really want to make sure when we're talking about it all, I get the best feel for what they want. Even if, and if they give me, you know, a hundred songs, I'm still going to poke and prod them because I know I'm not going to make a hundred songs last more than an hour and a half to two hours. That's still going to leave me two or three hours of reception time. I'm going to have to fill. So I'm definitely very into, and on top of all that, scoping out their Spotify playlists, I will go get, if they've given me one, I will look at all the stuff they've checked out recently and their, you know, their most heavily played stuff. Then I'll go scope them on social media like Facebook, you know, and Insta to see, okay, you've given me your music, but what activities are you doing in conjunction with that? Are you sports fans? Blah, 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 and all that. So I can come up with a great idea. So for example, if I know they went to University of uh, Mad Wisconsin Madison, you're damn right. I'm playing Jump Around and I'm going to probably kick off the night with it. It's a big UWM song. No clue why. But then, you know, uh, for other colleges, I, if you went to those, I'm going to poke and figure out what your school songs were. And if you're a Big Ten school that has a big party tech campus, I'm going to play into that as well. So as much info as I can get from them, I am going to use that to create a great set. Okay. Well, one of the things is that when someone gives you a list of 200 songs, let's say, and they may have the expectation of you playing all those songs. And throughout the night, at their whole entire wedding, you don't usually hit 100 songs, 150 songs for a dance floor. You know, if you have two hours of dance time at 200 songs, that's like two minutes a song, you know, a minute a song. You know, you're you're talking something that's very, very fast, and you may not have people who are happy with that. And that, well, that can I will be talk to my, I will definitively tell my couples, you're giving me this big list. There's only two ways we do this. Either I'm going to quick mix every pop, like, you know, celebration from Cool and the Gang into We Are Family. You get a verse of the chorus. Next song, verse of the chorus. We're just going to keep moving. Or I can play more of them out, but I'm not going to get to your whole list. I mean, my average, the average number of songs I drop in four hours at a wedding is probably close to 150 to 200 songs. Unless they've given me a lot of, you know, the songs you can't cut. There's no cutting man. I feel like woman, sweet Caroline, don't stop believing. But on the other stuff that I can quick mix through, I'm always blazing through that. It just saves time. Like I was joking with my DJ friends from uh, my set on Friday night. It was in five hours, 266 songs. And that was me playing a couple songs all the way out through my sound check, where I think I played like a 20 minute long mix just that I know of, you know, preset mix so I could just balance everything out in the room I was in. But I, I tend to blaze through as much as I can because no one's going to remember, you know, really care that, oh, you didn't play the final chorus on this song. They're going to remember being on the dance floor the whole night singing and screaming. But, and I hate to bring his name up, Nick Spinelli did make a good point in Quit Mixing that you have to figure out what parts of the songs you can play and what songs you can get rid of. Because, like, for example, in the Spice Girls Wannabe, you get rid of that rap, everybody looks at you funny. Or if you play Bottoms Up from Trey, if you skip the Nicki rap, girls will lose their mind. I did that once, and I'm like, whoops, we made a big boo-boo here. <laughs> so you have to really pay attention to what parts our people are always digging on and what parts you can eliminate if you're going to quit mix in and out of songs like that. Or... The other part of this having catchy wordplay transitions or little loops and rolls to the next song that catch people off guard so they don't realize you haven't played the whole song. But my, I mean, my general what average wedding set in four hours is at least 150. At least. And that's including the ones I'm playing all the way through, 
the ones, you know, that you have to and all that. Like, for example, we found love from Calvin Harris. After that first drop, I'm out. You know, once, you know, after that first, you know, where you can mix in like everybody's been doing, uh, Whitney, you want to dance with somebody into the rest of the verse, and then I'm out of that song when it hits that drop. So there's a lot of songs like that you can do that to, which enable you to get more into your set, which couples really did. At least that's what I see. Yeah, I, 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 my, the couples I don't see, they the, most people I was talking to a couple from this past weekend from, uh, and I have a couple of our meetings coming up for a wedding show. We just had a wedding show Sunday, and I was talking to a couple, and they're like, we were at a wedding. We hated it. We 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 left because the DJ was playing, you know, basically 20, 30 seconds of song, and that was it. And it's like, I go, did you tell the people that it was their wedding that you weren't happy with it or anything like that? And afterwards, she's like, yeah, I sent her a message after the wedding saying that, yeah, you didn't like the DJ, didn't like the music. She goes, I want to make sure you don't do that. And I don't. I don't quick mix. You know, there's a way to blend things and get in and out of songs properly. But the thing is, that I, I feel that quick mixing a lot of times, certain songs, yeah, it's not a bad thing to go halfway through or whatever, like uh, MFO, uh, Party Rock Anthem, when she starts, you know, talk, you know, when she starts, you know, singing and, and, the, and the bass is gone, I go into like something else there at 130 and, you know, I start bringing a beat in on it. So it's pretty far in. But there's no is, reason to drag those out. Like even Sean Paul's temperature. It has. I do, yeah, I, I quick mix like crazy now. And it's you, you people get bored so easily of a song and I could see yeah. it in the crowd. Um, I, I agree certain songs you can't quick mix, but like to me, I even I cringe when I'm at other DJs weddings and the guy is playing it for more than two verses. Like it, it depends, like no hands. You're going to let that ride all the way through because every verse is gold. Um, but like, I always like now what I do is if, if there isn't a short edit, I make it a short edit by putting cue points in there. And then that way I could see if they're enjoying the song, I won't do my cue point three to four skip to skip a whole verse or chorus or whatever. Like I can just let it play. So I leave the option open, but most of the time I download super short or short edits just cause I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't used to do that, but like I, I record my sets now and I'm playing like 11 songs in the first 10 minutes. Um, and I think you kind of have to like, at least to start the dance floor to really get people out there. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know. I've seen I that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, mean, I don't, people have, I don't, people I don't have such that. low attention fans. Well, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's TikTok's influence. That's what it is. Yeah, You're playing TikTok it is. for it. And by I, far, I, I won't do it because of the th fact that I feel that it's cutting songs short and you're leaving a lot on there. And it's like, you're going through songs, going through songs, going through songs. You, you guys want to eat up songs. That's entirely up to you. I'd much rather have, you know, 80% of the song, you know, there and let people, you know, enjoy it and then get out when I, you know, when it's, when it's more further in, but on your much, question on, on uh, Matt, how yeah. many songs do you ask your clients for, for must -haves? I don't put a I don't put a limit on it. Um, I just say, you know, in my emails, I say, here's the three playlists we use for cocktail hour dinner and pre-ceremony. Here's like three different cocktail hour options. Do you like any of them? Usually they do. If not, they just send me one. And then I say, you know, do you have any Spotify playlists that you've been working on? Typically they're like 40 to 60 songs, not must plays, but just like, here's an idea. And then their must plays are maybe like 10 or 15. Uh, but I don't put a limit on it. Like, to be honest, I'd rather them give me a playlist. Like I have one. She gave me like, six different playlists of like here's the spanish stuff we like here's the edm we like here's the hip-hop we like here's the throwbacks we like that just made my job 10 times easier because i don't have to like spend an hour going through my wedding crates and other crates to find stuff that is similar because that's 160 songs right there that i'm given between all those totals so that just makes it easier so typically though like i don't know i don't i don't if they try to send me like the only time i'll ever say something is if they try to send me a must playlist of like 30 plus because like that's a lot to get through and especially if they're all over the place but i don't know like and my thing is i've had must playlists and i've maybe missed two or three or four of them because of time constraints and never once has anybody complained like if they're having a great time like if the song is that important to them they'll come up and request it uh, like oh we, we have to make sure we play this like otherwise fine 
Okay. So I'll let them do more work than I do. It makes it so much easier. Just give me a big playlist. Makes my job so much easier. And then like, but I, I like to fill it in. Like what I have is I always have a running playlist that I update religiously of new stuff to try at weddings. And that's where I get some of these like newer, more interesting remixes or some bigger EDM drops that like I can maybe do 30 seconds or 50 seconds of. Um, so I, I, cause in the middle of the mix, you're, you're not going to think of like, Oh, I need this song and this song and this song. Like you're not going to think of it, but if it's right there in front of your face of new stuff to try, might as well throw it in there. So okay, that's how I do it. I just get bored of playing the same stuff. I mean, it's like the wedding I did this weekend. The, the first 40 minutes was dance floor openers because at this specific venue, they, uh, it's open bar during cocktail hour, but then they close the bar until after dinner. So basically people want to, uh, as soon as dinner is done and the bar is open, people are going straight to that. They're not going to the dance floor. So it took a couple songs to get them out there. So, yeah. But most of my, most of my weddings though, like they're ready to party. Like they know who they're booking and they're ready to party. So like, I don't usually start with warm up songs. I usually just go like, I'll start with dance with somebody into that. We found love remix that I always play. And I just, just go from there, you know, um, and just see how the night goes. And, and I do slow it down. Like I don't, stay at 128 all night but i think you either start energetic or if it's an older crowd you kind of warm them up or if the bar is opening warm them up but that's where the that's where the three hours of not mixing during cocktail hour and dinner <laughs> that buddy does I, i'm observing and and chilling and getting mentally prepared no i i i like to uh i did i did uh i will tell you i did i did mix one dinner set um and because they were like from Hawaii, so they wanted a lot of like island music and reggae. And I know that doesn't go over well during dancing, but like it fit perfect at the end of dinner. And I had already eaten. We still had like 30, 40 minutes of dinner service and then speeches. So I'm like, let me just get this crowd amped up a little bit. And uh, that's that's when I'll mix during dinner is when I'm like, you know, I want to mix. I'm bored. Let's get let's get on with it. Well, the one thing I look at this way again, like like as before, you know, when you have uh, a playlist you get from a couple i feel a lot of times you know again are you djing or are you just an mp3 player and that's the thing you gotta look at you know is what are you doing with that music that you have you use as a tool you using to build stuff off do you tell the customer hey you know what thanks for the playlist because like the wedding i've come up with this coming saturday they gave me a list of like 60 songs and we're like when we we sat down with them and talked to them, we're like, okay, this is, you know, you want all these songs played that you're expecting? And they're like, uh, well, we'd like to have the songs. I'm like, well, 60 songs. I go, that's going to be your whole entire night and no request, basically. Because they ha they'll have about two and a half hours of dance time. You know, yeah. probably get a few more extra songs than that. But 60 songs, I'm like, yeah. and again, your what but your guests? Well, these were what people requested. I asked them, to request, you know, they request you know, from the guests that they got from their uh, RSVP uh, cards. And it's like, yeah, they're going to request more songs than this. Uh, you know, the, the last wedding uh, this past weekend, uh, like I put request sheets out. I have a little, you know, a little table request uh, sheets. I had three sheets of request. You know, I get sometimes five, I get six sheets of request. I go through it and see what fits, what works and go in there. People request a lot of songs doesn't mean they're going to get it. But the thing is, I at least go through it and try and see where what a crowd wants or what the crowd people are thinking and see what works. And, you know, again, you find those diamonds in the rough that you put up there. Everybody's going crazy on the dance floor. So, Mr. Dixon, I know that <laughs> I said the best for last. <laughs> um, for you, sir, when you talk to a client, how many songs do you ask for on average for your must plays? I use the Bible app as well. And I just have it set for infinity. And like, for example, the couple next week, the groom asked for like 12 songs, but the bride had put down 40 and all that. So basically the more I can get, the more songs they put down, I can get like a vibe. Don't mean that I'm going to play every one. And then a lot of times, a lot of people put down songs that not, it's not necessarily a danceable song, but I might play it like um, cocktail hour. Or like um, next week, they want classical music. So I would take those songs that I wouldn't necessarily play for the dance, but find like a uh, orchestra kind of arrangement so they can still hear the song and I can get through it. So 
And then also I use um with the Bible app, I save it um their playlist to my Spotify. And so the last few times I opened up Spotify, and I scroll down to the bottom and it says, um, based on your songs in this playlist, these are some good songs to get some ideas to also throw in. And I just build a playlist from what they what they give me. And Spotify just uh just did a thing for um with um music for professionals basically saying that we are not professional service and you should not be using us uh and i think uh well um the record box and uh virtual dj you can't do stuff from spotify onto them because uh they uh don't want to get into the legal headache of that so Spotify, you know, again, people, I know a lot of people use Spotify. Matt uses Spotify for certain things and you have Spotify. Religiously. And it's, it's one of the things that I'm not a fan for it because again, it's, if you're a DJ, you're hired to play music. If you're a uh, record player or you're a jukebox, like it was back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever you want to look at it. Um, then that's, that's Spotify. And it's, yeah, I understand, Matt. You know, you you want to sit back, relax, and enjoy that first you know hour or so, but you know, then you shouldn't charge for the hour of DJing. Done. You should be like, okay, I don't charge. I don't charge for this hour because I'm not DJing. You're basically I have to be there, <laughs> but you're basically just a sound engineer. You're just making yeah. sure the volumes are there and this, it's the volume set. So that that's one of the things that you know I. That's my personal opinion. Again, everybody can do what the heck they want to do. I'm not saying I'm right or this is gospel. I'm not saying that Brentley is bad or Dwayne is bad or Matt's bad or this person's bad or I'm in it. I'm I'm bad. I'm not saying anybody anyone. Everyone has a different way of doing this. Everybody has a different thought of doing it and different way of tackling the same problem. And this is why I ask these questions because it's interesting to see what other people do and what you guys do out there in the real world as well as what I do with my, uh, my weddings. And every single time at a wedding, I like to, you know, talk to the couple, get to know the couple, ask questions, talk about their music and stuff. And I'm sure you do. And, you know, again, the Vibe app, which again, Dwayne, you have it as well. Um, I know that there's some, uh, uh, some people you can get on their app. Uh, I know DJ Rachel, which has been on the show a few times. She has her uh, um, wedding checklist there. I know uh, Rick Webb, who's been on the show a long time ago. Uh, he has his checklist there in Viable. You have other you know things on there. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike from uh, Vibo is really good about stuff. Um, he is a... Uh, person who is always trying to make sure that there's a lot opening. And if you are on Facebook, they actually have a Vibo chat group that you can join if you're a Vibo uh, DJ and you can actually ask questions in that chat group and they have stuff going on. Like DJ Rachel's had a couple chats going on and her uh, on, on there and she was answering questions on Vibo and Vibo. Um, I, Again, I, I like the product, you know, again, and Dwayne, what do you think of Vibo? You like the product? Yeah, it's real easy because I, and I know my clients like it. I can just send them and then anytime they want to work on it, they can work on it at that leisure and it automatically ups dates. And then I got linked to my um, music library. So I love it. And Matt as well, um, you use uh, what Excel or use a spreadsheet? I don't use anything. I don't need a software to run my business. Um, I, I just, I have too many clients that are not going to spend the time to download an app or go to a website to put in songs. They just want to either text them or email them. So I just try to make it easy. Um, I have a templated email I send like at the beginning of the month for my weddings the next month. And I just tell them, send me all that in there. You know, I have some clients that do a shared Apple note with me. So sometimes they do that. Sometimes they want to collaborate on a Spotify playlist to like, Whatever's easiest, like as long as I have what I need, um, some just want to type it out. Here's all song requests. They just type it out. That makes it even easier because I don't have to look through a Spotify playlist. But I don't use, yeah, I don't really use Vibo. Um, I mean, my software is old anyway, so it wouldn't save me any time. It wouldn't upload into anything. So, uh, that yeah, I don't I don't see the 
the benefit in it. But yeah, like I said, I had a client on Friday. They was like pulling teeth to get any songs from them. And then they sent me this ugly ass, excuse me, ugly email with just <laughs> bold text and 16 point font all over the place. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, Hey, you have to use my app. Like, I, I don't know. It's, I think, I think I can... DJs that use it, use it as a tool is like good for them. But like at wedding shows, I tell them specifically, we don't make you work any harder to plan your wedding. Like I'm not going to make you download an app. Like I understand a lot of couples love it and Oh my God, it's such a cool, you know, cool thing. But a lot of couples aren't that tech friendly or tech savvy and, and don't, you know, want to spend time downloading something. Uh, so yeah, I just tell them whatever's easiest for you, send it my way. As long as I have what I need. Easy. So. I, I don't know. I think that, you know, a lot of brides and grooms I run into are on either wedding wire or the knot, or some are also right. on, uh, on Zola and that's an app they download and they have, you know, stuff in there for planning their, their wedding and their special events. You know, it's, it's like anything else. You got to talk to your customer. If your customer is not tax, uh, tech savvy uh, and they are not, you know, then there's other ways of doing stuff. You know, and there's not, again, there's not one way of doing things. Um, but, you know, it, it's one of the things that when you're doing, you know, interactions with a customer, you want to make it as easy, as simple as possible, which is very true. Yeah. You don't want to make them feel like they're jumping through hoops to deal with music for their event. You want them to think logically, but also the other thing is that you don't want to forget questions, especially like for ceremonies. You know, that's one nice thing with, with having it, you know, all written out. And then I, I have an Excel spreadsheet, which is the same exact thing is on Vibo. And that's why I copied onto Vibo and made all the little boxes the same thing. So ask questions like, you know, are you doing a formal scene in the mothers? Are you doing a song introduction for the officiant? Are you doing a song introduction for the groom or, you know, the first half of the couple? Um, are you doing a, you know, it's all these questions in there that I'm asking because the fact that there's so much to go on for a ceremony, then for the reception, it's asking those questions. So it's, it's doing two things. It's helping them plan their wedding, but also right. it's helping them fill in those spots because sometimes there's, there's questions i have there's no music for like you know okay who is doing the speeches you know so that way we know exactly who is authorized right. not that someone comes walking up saying hey i'm uh the brother of the groom or i'm the brother of the bride or i'm brother of whoever uh i was told to have a speech and you're like oh okay here's a microphone and they turn it into a andrew Dice clay set you know whatever it is it, it's one of the things you don't want to make you want to make sure the right people are up there and that's that's one of the reasons why we we have the due diligence, uh, Tracy and I do, just to make sure it's there. Uh, DJ Bradley, got a question for you. As always, uh, I know I know you have a lot of expertise and you have a lot of experience, uh, especially coming from here from Chicago and stuff. Uh, if you had a person walk up to you uh, during the middle of a cocktail or dinner during the middle of if I can talk right during the middle of dinner. Uh, and said, hey, I am so-and-so. Um, I want to make a speech to the couple or I want to make a speech to the birthday boy or birthday girl or to the birthday child. What do you do when they say that? Do you say anything to them? Do you give them the microphone or what do you do? Absolutely not. If it is not in my notes that from you know our online portal of Chet Cherry, if it has not been put in there and explicitly said I can do X, Y, or Z, you're out of luck. I'm not veering from this. And I will, when it comes to requests or anything like that, I will ask everyone that comes up to me about something that's not been permitted. Is your doing this going to make their day any better? And are, and if they're married, I'm going to ask them the second question. When you got married, did the DJ follow up? Did you have the DJ instructions and ask that they follow them? Yes, you did, didn't you? Well, in that case, wouldn't you like me to follow what the couple who was invited you here for did follow? And more often than not, that will shy everyone away from asking a second time or going to the couple and checking. And I hate to say it, it's I, I the last time it happened, and they went to the bride that was very recently, and she's like, no. My DJ told you, and I'm telling you, no. And they, the person making the request stormed out, angry. And 
I don't see, you know, with that, if you're making requests and the DJ says no because I'm not allowed to, leave it be. It's not your day. Let them have their day the way they want it. And you'll way run into that. It's usually some kind of family member who has good intentions, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes those good intentions are bad outcomes. And I'll leave you on this quick story, real quick. Um, the uh, hey, what's up, DJ Fire? Um, yeah, DJ Fire says, Well, what's up? Woke up from a nap and a long day of landscape and I'm beat. Oh, I, I, dude, I totally understand. This is your end of season stuff, so I can show you guys a lot of cleanups and stuff going on. Good videos, by the way, up on YouTube. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, don't forget to click that like button, that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that bell icon. That's always great. And all these guys here, all the links are down below. Uh, but when uh, we do stuff. We always talk to the venue managers, and uh, this was a uh, this was I want to say 2017, 2018. We're talking to a venue manager, and she was telling us about uh, what happened a week prior to um, the wedding we were doing. Uh, the DJ at the end of speeches said, "Does anyone else want to say anything to the couple?" Well, that opened up amateur night, and 45 minutes later dinner started because all these people lined up to talk on the microphone that he had up on a mic stand stand there and it became improv night at the wedding and some people were saying some pretty inappropriate things roasting each half of the couple and also roasting each other and saying very off-color comments about everything including the facility uh talking about the uh facility um not being up to par and uh, other things that would uh, may turn to people's stomachs, uh, which was untrue, but they were trying to make jokes and they were getting worse and worse and worse. Finally, the manager walked over to the DJ. They still had about six or seven people in line and asked him to turn off the microphone. He said no and continued on and again in 45 and 45 minutes. That's when they started dinner. I started dinner late. So all the food was, uh, you know, sitting in the warmers for too long and dried out. So they had to dry out chicken and beef, unfortunately, because of one person. So Matt, if someone comes walk up to you and says, hey, I am filling blank here. I want to say something to the couple. What do you do? Hmm? Huh? That's what you do to them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had you on mute for two seconds. What, oh, what the... see, I, I heard the speeches. You're talking about speeches, and somebody wants to make what? If somebody wants to make a toast, if someone walked up to you and says, "I am fill in the blank here," okay, I yeah. want to say something to the couple or something to the birthday boy or birthday it, girl it, or whatever. What do you do in that case? It depends because um, I've had it go very south, um, as you were mentioning, where everybody was like, "Well." Why is this guy giving a speech? He's not supposed to. Um, so now I make it a point to ask either the coordinator or the couple ahead of time, like if somebody comes up and asks to give a speech, do you want me to give them the mic or no? And 90% of the time it's a no. Uh, but like you know, six months ago, I didn't ask and somebody came up and he was he didn't say, any, say anything inappropriate, but it just felt like everybody was like, why are you giving a speech and who are you? And can we move this along? Because that's the other thing. If none of the guests know who you are, besides the newlyweds, then that's just like you shouldn't have to tell people like who you are and how you know them and why you're important enough to give a speech. Like, I also had a I had a weird one once where the photographer gave a speech, like didn't know the couple at all, but she was the photographer. And I just want to take a moment and say how amazing it's been, you know, showing your like uh, photographing your love and and uh, I've, I'm so blessed to be your photographer. And then she started crying and I was like what the heck is this so bizarre it was so awkward and everybody was just like didn't know what whether to clap or uh, it was it was weird very weird that could make it an awkward speech especially you know and we I've not, seen not the time not the time yeah I, I, I've seen I'm sure you guys seen it too uh people crying you know bridesmaids or sisters or brothers when they're talking even couples you know because they're still emotional I've seen that <laughs> But uh, get it together. <laughs> you know, but it happens. It's an emotional time. I, I get it. Celebration. It's love and stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a crier, of, so I. 
Speaking of love in Ohio and the man who go to in Ohio for a DJ, there's two DJs in Ohio that we love. And one of them is DJ Billy. And of course, the other one is Dwayne Dixon, the hitman. I have a question for you, sir. And you heard a question. Right. If someone comes up to you and says, I am fill in the blank here, I like to say a word or two to the couple or to the birthday boy, birthday girl, or whomever it is. Uh, what do you do when they do that to you? I try to get um, clearance from the bride and groom before I do it. Yeah, I just don't give them the mic right when they do it. Yeah, so I have to go get clearance from them and then decide what we're going to do it so they don't break up what we're trying to do when it's everything is on like a time limit. So, And that's another thing, too. You you hit the nail on the head on that, too, for time because how many times you go into the facility and you get there and you set up and you, if it's it doesn't matter, ceremony, reception, or just reception only, and you're in the middle of dinner or you're, you do the grand introductions, you know, it's cocktail hour, grand introductions, you know, cocktail hours, usually, you know, let's say from five to six, uh, grand introductions that, you know, start basically like people at, at like, uh, five fifty five, and then your grand introductions at six and then, you know, speeches and cake cutting and all that stuff. Um, you know, then by six twenty, it's dinner being served. And then someone comes up to you and goes, Hey, you know, it's six 30. I want, I want to say something, you know, well, you know what? Not sound bad. You know, that, that right there could cut into that time. Cause if you haven't done the other speeches yet, you know, there's people who got to go out and talk or if you're already past the speeches, are you going to stop everyone doing what they're doing, eating or getting served or whatever and have more speeches. And I don't know if you've run into it uh, yourself, Dwayne in there in Ohio, uh, but some of the venues I've done, um, usually the, the the venues that are more on what we call the North Shore area, uh, the more uh, exclusive uh, venues, they will not serve food or have servers walk around when people are talking. They'll actually call servers back if they someone stand up to speech. So if someone stand up to speak, they'll call the servers back and... Um, I've also been at places that they don't want announcements for dinner. They ring bells and tell you dinner is served. So it is one of the things that you go into a venue like that and an aunt so-and-so who wants to say something to the couple, which is sweet and nice, but you have to also look at it as timing as well that, well, they're serving, you know, soup, they're serving entrees, they're serving this. You got to wait till there's a lull and you got to talk to the, also, the room captain and say, "Hey, you know what? I have a someone who wants to make a speech. A couple, no, a couple said okay. They want to say something. You know, tell me when you're good to go because that's also that whole entire timing factor that uh, you got to worry about. So, uh, you know, it's always interesting when little places go. So, I, I, this I'm going to leave on this one because um, we got still got a little bit of time, and this is always a good one to ask. Um, so in your travels and all the venues you've gone to and all the places you've been to for weddings and events and parties and stuff, is there a venue, one venue on your list, or is there a few venues on your list that you, if someone comes and says, Hey, I am at venue in, insert here, whatever it is. Uh, I'm sorry. I do not service that venue or I'm sorry. I'm booked or whatever. What do you tell customers if they are at that one venue that, you know, you do not fit that venue. You're not like either it's a horrible place to work in. They don't take your, their customers well. You know the venue and you know the venue is not a good venue to go into for whatever the reason. Whatever the reason is, you know, you know they're too small of a stage. Their power you know, doesn't work right. You run into a venues like that. There's, there's a lot of great venues out there, a lot of great places to go to. Um, but there are a few venues that I try to say, yeah, um, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not available for that date because that venue I know is going to be a, uh, a a difficulty to say the least. And especially when I look out for my customers, I don't want a place, a venue that they're going to treat the customers poorly. And I will tell you, I have some great partners with venues this past weekend, uh, the Union in Rockford, great, awesome venue. Uh, I, I, I have really had very few bad venues but i have had 
over the many years, a couple of venues, and they've some have closed since then, but some are still open. <laughs> I avoid. So, Dwayne, is there some places in Ohio that you are not a fan for? And what do you tell clients? They say, hey, I'm booked at whatever venue it is. I don't need to know the name, but I'm booked at that venue. How do you go about to tell them, hey, I, I'm sorry that I don't serve at that venue? Um, I just talk to them, just be upfront with them and tell them my experience and see if it's something that's doable. If it's not doable, then I'll just let's turn it down and let them know why but i haven't ran into really too much of that yet of yet so it's always been like a workaround or like a compromise kind of thing so yeah, yeah. The only thing only venue only venues i was i would hate doing is like the one at the pizzeria where i had to go down a whole bunch of flight of stairs that's pretty much my only one other than that every, everybody else has been pretty cool and that's, that's always the difficult thing is, you know, there's difficult venues that have, okay, I know that, you know, going down this hallway, I got to take this hallway, the, the elevator is small. Those are difficulties, but they're workarounds. Hey, I can't put a whole cart up at one time. I got to take some stuff off the cart and, you know, knock my cart in half to put it up there and then go up with the cart and then low back, put the cart back on <coughs> empty and then open, you know, Tracy puts stuff on the cart, you know, because we usually a lot of times bring two carts of stuff. And, you know, I, I, there's a few venues that have layers small, take the rock and roller cart, cut it in half, take some stuff off, go up with the cart with half the stuff, <laughs> empty off the cart real quick, send the cart back down, wait for Tracy to throw the stuff on there, pull the cart up, unload it, <laughs> send the cart back down, put the other half of the other cart on there, bring it up, open the cart back up, fill that up, and then fill the other cart back up when it comes up. And it's, you know, the pain that we're in. Um those are our workarounds. You just got to add in more time, but um, you're lucky you have not run into those venues that you're like, Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want to be there. I ran into some house parties. I was like, like some of the kids and their parents that asked me to do like a party for them. I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't think I want to be good for that because he's like <laughs> knowing how you all are it's like i don't want to risk going there and something jump off and now i'm stuck so that's the only other ones that i would like kind of like back off that your your safety is very 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 important that's one of the things when you go to a private residence uh knowing where you're going and what's going on and again you want to service people but sometimes you know a, a, a a venue or a, a house or whatever where they're having the event at the area can be, you know, not the people, but the area can be more or less, uh, you know, sketchy. Do you want your vehicle broken into? Do you want damage your vehicle? Is there stuff going on there? Uh, you know, it, it's something that you don't want to have happen. And that's, that's encouraging people to have it at a venue, like a municipal venue. Uh, a lot of uh, municipalities have park districts and park districts have, uh, facilities and generally usually those facilities at park district facilities um, usually local law enforcement usually patrols it pretty heavily and you don't run into problems and that's nice that's one of the things you always talk to them about say hey you're better off having here and you know you can still bring your stuff in talk to them but you know you're better off having here it's easier to get in and out you have plenty of parking that's the other part is sometimes in a house you know Especially in, mm -hmm. I, and again, I grew up in the city of Chicago. My area of the city was pretty easy, but when we went further into the city, those houses are on top of each other. The blocks are, there, there's no garages. The garages are in the back of the alley. There's just street parking and it's bumper, bumper vehicles. And you got to go park a, a vehicle with a trailer or a big SUV or a van or something. It could be really hard. You know, I got to totally understand that. Talk about a man who has a van, who also has an SUV and has, well, actually has two vans, one big van, one little van. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> when you have a venue, and I'm talking your beautiful venue that you always have on the river, um, that they love you and you love them. I'm talking about the, the place that you kind of like cringe and like, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't want to service that venue. How well, do you fun with the trash the cans. <laughs> How do I handle it? Well, first off, I will honestly ask the couple if they've confirmed the date there or not. And that will always tr trigger a question out of the couple. 
why are you questioning, you know, why, you know, why do you want to know if it's confirmed? Because if it isn't, it's a venue I don't go to. And if you really want me to be your DJ, I just don't feel comfortable produce what I, that I can produce the results that you want at your wedding at X, Y, or Z venue. And then if they ask why, for example, rustifications in Loyal, Wisconsin, I will tell them the owner runs around during your event in flip-flops, cargo shorts, and a t-shirt. They leave trash cans out. They allow food vendors with dairy products to actually start setting up at 12 noon when the product is going to sit out in the warm and not be served for six or seven hours. And let's take that one step further with rustifications. Because they are a legitimate farm, they have cows just, you know, a few hundred feet away from it. And what do cows generally bring around? Feces and flies. With that, I, I, I've already, let, one couple actually had messaged me about my opinion on rustic occasions. They, I've been very outspoken about it. But there's other venues that are in that same category. Uh, I believe it's called Willow and Oak, but it's part of the Hillsborough Brewing Company. I absolutely will not go back there. And it's because how poorly they treat DJs compared to everyone else. For some reason, DJs, when you're at that venue, are peasants and are treated as such. They will stare at you if you're not out the door by 1230. Why aren't you moving faster and start giving you a hard time? And I finally snapped. I'm like, look, you could let me use the freight elevator that's behind your beer, your vats. Or B, you're going to wait another 90 minutes for me to go down your elevator that I can fit two speakers and two subs in at a time, then go around, walk down, and hope to catch the elevator. That's one of those venues I just don't want to go back to. Or if, if it's been staff issues, I will relay that to them that the venue's great, but their staff has shortcomings. And here's what I had to do the last time I was there to make sure it worked for what they wanted. So I'm, and I've gotten very, very, call me a little bee about it, a princess. If I don't feel comfortable going to a venue and being able to produce the results that the couple wants, I just can't do it because I'm going to sell them short. And I'm not risking a bad review or not feeling good about it when I walk away at the end of the day. So that's what I think about it all. No, and that's that's one of the things that you need to protect. Again, you need to protect yourself, especially a venue that, uh, you know, it, uh Temperature and time is very crucial with food. Anyone here, uh, I, I've been food certified because it, it being a man, coming from management, you've been food certified. If you have not been food certified, between 40 and 140 degrees is called the danger zone. Food actually has to be held below 40 degrees, usually 35, 36 degrees refrigeration uh, or frozen, or it has to be above 140 degrees for holding for so much time. Um, Except for pork, pork has to hold at 150. Yep. And the thing is that you have to, it's only so much time too. You got to have that, uh, that temperature for, and you should be temping the item. You know, that's why if you see a restaurant, you see a chef, a lot of times, even if you if it's the executive chef, they're overseeing, but you'll see sous, sous chefs, uh, you'll see uh, cooks, they'll have uh, thermometers on their sleeves of that. And you'll see them temping things, pull the thermometer out and temping things and seeing and checking time. And again, coming from that area of uh, dealing with food products, uh, even though I didn't work at a restaurant, I still dealt with it on when I worked, uh, worked before in retail, it's having food products there. You had people who would prep the food products, but you'd still, as a manager, have to make sure it's temped and you had to be certified in sanitation. So it's, that's bad if it's out there for a few hours and that's not kept refrigerate especially a item that's a cold item so matt uh that was uh do you have any facilities out there by you in california that have cows walking through the venue and uh defecating uh merely uh yards away from uh oh. your uh wedding set no i don't really uh, i mean i don't work with places like that hardly anymore i used to when i was back in the central coast because there's a lot of farm weddings barn weddings but um i uh, I mean, a broad thing, I won't DJ in somebody's backyard. Um, that's for sure. Not a wedding, not a house. I just, I don't like, I just don't, I don't do backyard weddings. Um, 
if it's an Airbnb and it's an estate, I probably won't do that either um, because I know the neighbors are going to complain about noise and that's not fair to the couple. But um, I mean, there's a couple venues that I won't do because of noise issues. Um, you know, one of them was this past weekend, they made me use their speakers and I, it's maybe it's a thing that Yamaha does, but uh, all these venues that have noise limits, they, ha they all have DXRs. They all have Yamaha DXRs and they set them to the max volume and then they have some sort of internal limiter that they are running it through so that like you have to plug in through there and no matter how much you crank it like there's a certain point to where you just can't go up anymore or it'll just start you know sounding like shit um garbage but um so like this one wasn't that bad it was but it wasn't horrible and they were like the guy was super nice about it and uh, the couple was very understanding like they knew ahead of time but the ones i don't like is when they talk to the couple and say, oh yeah, you know, a 60 decibel limit is, is totally fine and it'll be plenty loud. And then, you know, they complain to you to turn it up. So there's a couple of those. Um, there's one, I mean, there is an animal one. We have the San Diego Zoo uh, in Escondido. So it's not really in San Diego, but uh, they have, it, it was more just a difficult load in that you, you can't drive your own vehicle up to the loading area. You have to transfer everything to their cargo van. Um, and then they have multiple weddings going on and only one van throughout the whole property. So if there's other DJs and vendors, then you have to wait. And, you know, we were fully torn down and waiting for about an hour and a half uh, in the cold before we got a ride. Luckily, wait, wait, wait. What, what's, what's, wait, what's cold for you? It was like 40, like 42 degrees. It was significant. It was pretty cold. That's cool. That's not cold. That, that's cold for that's California. Not... Wait, that's wait, cold. that's not cold. That, oh, that's, come on, man. That's cold. 42 degrees. Look that's at this, cold. California flip-flops and shorts, <laughs> and he's 42 that's degrees. He's, oh, come on. Hey, You're talking to three guys from the Midwest here. Ugh, <laughs> I, that's that's cold for, for beautiful California. So it, you know, I won't my temperature right now, it's 51 degrees. You know, this is, you know, <laughs> this is October I, I, from Chicago. <laughs> I, I personally won't DJ anywhere where I have to go upstairs um, to get to where I need to set up. Like, and I haven't run into that knock on wood yet. So luckily I'm in luck, but uh, I mean, we have a lot of gear and it's not, it's not just a mixer and two speakers and a Kinta, like a lot of my other DJ friends run. Like if that's your setup, then yeah, that's easy. But I've got two cartloads plus two subs, two speakers uh, or one sub and two speakers. It's a lot of gear and it's a lot of trips. So um yeah anywhere with stairs but yeah i don't it's luckily i if if it's a venue that i like know it's gonna be not fun like there's one in fallbrook called grand traditions and they are the dumbest people because they say no subwoofers but they have djs on their list that are bringing out column arrays uh, and e-boxes week after week they just don't understand that the bottom part is a subwoofer uh, so, they're not really true subwoofers, but they're not really but, really a two way cabinet. A line arrays. If work they can get away with that, I should get away with my eighteen. If they can get away with that, like it's it's not even outside. Like I get it if because they I've DJed at two different venues at that property. One of them's outside, and they have neighbors, so I I get it. There's no neighbors anywhere around, by the way. But um, the inside, it's like a ballroom, thick walls, no openings anywhere. Like, what's the issue? And they're just. The staff there is just very rude to DJs that are not on the preferred list. So anytime it's an outside and same thing, there's a, there's this other place called Wedgwood. I don't know if you have them over there, but they're basically all in one wedding venues where you pay one fee and it includes catering, chairs and tables, staffing, photo booth, DJ, lighting, everything, like every single thing, photographer, video, everybody. And so you can usually pick between one or two of their DJs but there are DJs that are getting paid like 500 bucks by the venue and charging the couple like a grand or something. But those, those Wedgwood places, like they hate it when an outside vendor comes in because it's basically the client telling them to piss off. I don't like your vendors, so I'm going to bring my own. And I already paid for yours anyway, but I, I want to make sure I have a good wedding. So I'm going to pay extra to, to bring the DJ and photo booth that I want to bring. So those, those, I just, when, when, I laugh when a every time. When a, venue, when, when a venue is pushing, you know, again, Prefer, being preferred is one thing, but when a venue is pushing stuff, there's there's a few venues, not, not what the company you said, but there's a few venues here that are all inclusive, but they usually have multiple vendors to pick between. And generally, usually they they pay pretty well, those vendors, because they want to keep good vendors. 
but there's a few that I, that are all inclusive and they don't pay their vendors well. And that's, that's, you know, that's, that's a vendors taking that up. And it's like anything else. If you want good people, you have to pay a good price. It's, and it varies from market to market, market, what that good price is, but you should, if you're, exclu- uh, if I had an exclusive, uh, all inclusive uh, venue that had everything you have picked between this list, here's six DJs. If one of those DJs come in, I want to make sure they're paid a good amount of money because I want to keep good venue, good ma- uh, people on that group. Oh man, hour gone by so fast, everyone. It is uh, so fast and goes by so quickly. And it is one of the things that with everything going on, it's always great to have you guys here. Another week, another show in the box. Hopefully you guys don't enjoy something. Again, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you click follow. Make sure you knock the bell icon to make sure you know you get hit for this on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, we are on live on Tuesday nights over on Twitch. So make sure you tune in there. I want to thank everyone for the panel tonight and as well as our two members who are not here this evening uh, out, uh, out and about doing stuff uh, for family. Hopefully uh, they'll be back here next week. Other than that, you guys tune in next week. And because we have Hunter here, Matt, take us out, sir. Peace. (laughs) Oh, yeah.